Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And today we're going to talk about idols, I-D-O-L-S, and I'm not talking about American Idol, but I'm talking about anything that we place a higher value on than our relationship with God. And that is what an idol is. Now, are you thinking to yourself, well, Christians can't have idols? Oh, yes, we can. And I learned that the hard way, so I thought maybe I'd share with you what I went through, so maybe if there's some idols in your life, you can deal with them, and if you don't have any idols, consider this a cautionary tale. It's kind of interesting, when I was preparing to do this, I knew this was coming up in the book, but the other day, completely by accident, just a random thing, I dropped and shattered a mug that I had for over 30 years that I actually purchased when I was in Youth with a Mission and I was at a conference and they were selling these ceramic mugs with the Youth with a Mission logo on it. I now only have two items left from my time in Youth with a Mission and I was there for 14 years. Anyhow, after a lot of sacrifice, I landed on the doorstep of Youth with a Mission in Ontario, Canada, way back in the 80s. And for the next 14 years, I traveled across North America. I lived in Asia, and I was in South America. And I got to be around cultures from all around the world. I was ministering to many different cultures and it just fed something inside of my heart. But you know, along the way, I made a grave error. I allowed my work for the Lord to become my identity. My ministry actually became an idol. I found security in my title as a missionary or as Youth with a Mission, missionaries were called Y Whammer. Well, others could boast on their great marriages, loving children, and successful careers, I could at least say that I was in God's service. But in God's severe mercy, he convicted me of making ministry an idol and something to hide behind and called me to lay it down. Although I repented to a degree, I had no idea how deep this idol was in my life. And I wasn't able to see the devastating damage that this root was causing in my life until it was almost too late. God led me to a loving church. I was a burnt out missionary who was holding on to my title with clenched fingers, just afraid to let go. But in that church, I received healing and restoration. And not only did he restore me, he eventually fulfilled many of the dreams and hopes that I had carried deep in my heart when I was in Youth with a Mission, and none of them were fulfilled when I was in Youth with a Mission. I'm not saying it was wrong that I was in Youth with a Mission, by the way. I'm saying it was wrong for me to place my identity and hopes in an organization. But God is gracious. I stepped down from my role as missionary in Youth with a Mission about the same time that my doctor recommended that I stop working. I had to climb a huge staircase to get to the Youth with a Mission office every day. And anybody who knows me well would kind of wince when I say I was by myself in an office, nobody to talk with, nobody to mentor or whatever, and all I did was the accounting and once in a while somebody would drop by for some information about youth with a mission. But during that time, God exposed the cancer in my heart that my identity was not supposed to be on what I was doing for God. My identity needed to rest in who he said I was. It took a lot of 
healing and a lot of hard work and I still have to ask the great physician to make sure that that cancer never returns. If you were to declare this, and I'm sure a lot of you when I say this, you're going to go, oh no, not that. If you were to declare to God, God, I would give you anything. I would do anything for you. You can have it all. Except, what would be that one is exception? The answer to that question is probably what you need to surrender to the Lord more than anything else. Now, I am not saying when you surrender those exceptions to the Lord that he is going to ask you to walk away from those exceptions. But he wants you to remember that he is the giver of all good gifts and that we are the stewards of those things that are those people that he has placed in our lives. There are times sometimes where God won't even give them back because he knows that they will always be a stumbling block to us. For example, I know a few people who were involved with the creative arts and they were serving the Lord within the creative arts stream. They put their identity so much in, you know, the relative fame or whatever that they walked further and further away from the Lord and became more and more people-pleasing until it poisoned their heart. And basically they lost everything because their anxiety in having people recognize their creativity became so large it began to affect their creative talents and Therefore, the jobs were no longer coming. But submission and obedience are not only vital for our spiritual health. They are vital to all those in our lives. If our identity is being something to someone, then we will subconsciously sabotage that person finding freedom because we've always carried the identity of being their caregiver. When we walk forward in obedience, however, we open the door to God's blessings. Anyhow, that's all I've got to say. I'm mourning my mug, but I'll get over it, and I hope you have a really wonderful day.